Hello, this is teacher Maria, and today at our School of SFB we are going to talk about drawing fundamentals. Drawing is creating an illusion of three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface. For example, I want to draw Vermeer's girl with a pearl earring. I start from positioning her on paper, finding a very generic silhouette of her, as if she is wrapped in a bag. And then I start slowly breaking her into smaller and smaller parts, one division at a time. Each division breaks the form into the two parts, I want to make sure that the relationship between them is correct, that the head is as big compared to the scarf as in the original artwork. While making this division, I'm looking at the whole artwork together, not just at the parts I'm dividing. Once I have positioned the facial part of the head, I can start finding the facial features on it. As people, we are trained to identify eyes and lips on the head and look mostly on them. This is how we read the emotion. But if we want to draw a face alike, we need to look at it as a group of abstract shapes. Uh, this way we will not exaggerate or make the facial features smaller. First part of my drawing, sketching, finding proportions, is over. And now I'm switching to the shading part. We see things because light reflects from them, and shading imitates this light. While shading, I explore values, relationship of lights and darks in my work and also texture of the objects. Today we will be learning to shade. Today we will sketch the most common simple geometric forms, spheres, cylinders and blocks, learn how light reflects from them, and then learn to see them in more complicated objects. Before we draw the forms, let's learn to create a solid value with your pencil and a smooth transition from lights to darks. Move your pencil back and forth on paper, you'll create a pretty solid value, but if you try to extend it, you will end up with patches. To avoid patches, try raising your pencil tip each time a little bit once you finish the stroke. As an exercise, try creating a large shape of value without patches. If it doesn't work right away, keep practicing. Next step, make a scale and transition from light to dark color. Try to make it as smooth as possible. Feel free to use several pencils of different hardness. Pencils with letter H will be making uh, light and defined lines. Uh, soft pencils with letter B on them are uh, soft, dark, and fluffy lines. Our regular HB pencils are somewhere in between. Try making another scale using just one kind of pencil. And if you want to create extra darkness, Try several layers of strokes at slightly different directions. This is called cross-hatching technique. Now we know how to shade. Let's see how light reflects from a sphere. Let's put a sphere in three positions regarding the source of light. One on the same level. And the shadow will be breaking the sphere shadow right Shadow is the, the part that the lamp cannot see, so it's always on the opposite side from the lamp. There is also a part of the table that a lamp cannot see because of the object. This is dark too and called cast shadow. And shadow on the object is called the object shadow. In the second picture, the lamp is in front of the ball. We see the ball uh, more from the light side. Third picture, a lamp is further than the ball. Uh, we mostly see the shadow part of the ball. These are your familiar phases of the moon. But moon is alone in the sky. Most objects on Earth have other light objects surrounding them, and the shadows will have light reflecting back from the surrounding objects. Let's draw a shade and sphere. Start from positioning. Don't try to make a perfect outline with just one hand gesture, but instead find top, bottom, left, right marks, find a center, and make short segments of the outline equally spaced out from the center. Clean up your circle a bit and find the uh, border of light and shadow as well as the outline of the cast shadow on the table. On the opposite side from the shadow there will be a highlight area where the light hits your object at 90 degrees. The rest will be slightly getting darker and darker and darker and please carefully make this transition remembering your previous exercises. Feel free to add other layers of strokes at slightly different angles. Your job is to create a smooth transition, first from light to shadow. The border of light and shadow will be the darkest part of uh, the shadow on the object, and then there will be some reflected light um, on the bottom part of the shadow. Make sure that your cast shadow has blurry, foggy outlines, otherwise it will look like a dark spot on the table. 
Feel free to add funny details to your sphere if you want. And maybe quickly sketch a couple of characters based on a spherical shape. Now let's start talking about cylinders. You can imagine a cylinder as a pile of plates. At the feet level, you will see top of the plate, it will look like a perfect circle. At your eye level, it will become flat. The rest will be a transition. And if you rise it up, you will see the bottom, but the plate will look like a perfect circle again. Any cylinder you see will be a fragment of the segments. The round part that you can see will always be more flat since it's closer to your eye level. The one that you cannot see but it only half is visible to you um, will be more open. But because people do not see the circle in full, they often make it more flattened, which is wrong. Please do not make this mistake. To draw a cylinder of eye top and bottom marks, central line of symmetry and position where the oval will be. Draw a horizontal line of symmetry in the middle of the oval and make sure that all four parts look mirrored. Your oval should be symmetrical and rounded everywhere, not angular. Remember, it's still a flattened circle. Now find the line of symmetry for the bottom oval. Remember, it's more open because it's further away from your eye level. Define the lines, make sure your uh, cylinder is not tilting, that it is symmetrical and start shading. Your cylinder is a pencil with many, many sides. One side is the most exposed to light, others are darker, darker, then eventually there is a shadow in some reflected light on the opposite side from the light. Lighten up your guidelines and start shading. Always keep in mind where the light is coming from. Uh, put your strokes in the direction of the surface of your cylinder. Where the border of light and shadow, the core shadow meets the ground, cast shadow will start there. Now feel free to sketch a funny character based on the cylindrical form. And let's start talking about the blocks now. Imagine this cylinder being put in a box, then add another box and another box and another box behind it. As you know, boxes will be getting smaller and smaller in the distance. And these rows of boxes will eventually disappear on a horizon line. Spots where they will disappear are called the vanishing points. And since we're looking from the side, we see two vanishing points. Well, I colored sides of the box in green and blue to show which vanishing point they belong to. Now draw a cube and uh, shade it. It's very easy to shade a box. One side is lighter, other one is darker, the last one is the darkest. And sketch a couple of funny characters based on the boxy structure. All right, I think uh, this is it for today. Homework, please find a few objects based on spheres, cylinders, and blocks. Sketch and shade them. Good luck.